Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me again, Gen X Psychic Medium. Today, we have such a great video for you. We are going to be talking about Reiki. What is it? Is it redeemable? Should Christians be doing it? Today, I'm joined uh, by my very good friend, Doreen Virtue, my sister in Christ. Thank you so much for joining me, Doreen. You were a Reiki master before Jesus Christ saved you. And we're going to pick your brain today. Yep. Good. Yeah, this is something I just want to preface by saying I have some righteous anger about Reiki and I get a lot of uh, pushback whenever I talk about it. So I expect we're going to get pushback today and we're going to answer the frequently asked questions that I get in the pushback because I, I, you know, I hear from people who want to argue that Jesus did Reiki, that it can be redeemed. I mean, I, all sorts of things and that it feels good in it. And, and most of all, they argue that it works. And so let's just start with that. I'm, I was a Reiki master, as you said. So yeah, it, it's, a, it's a very palpable process. You can feel Reiki. It's not something that's a placebo or imagination. It, there's this vibration to it that's very strong. I mean, it reminds me of the old, um, we put a quarter in a chair and, and the chair starts to vibrate kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's a lot of anecdotes that people have about healings that they got. In fact, one of the women who uh, promoted Reiki to the West got healed from Reiki, she said. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's just do the, the basics though. The name Reiki comes from Japanese for Rei, which means uh, universal life and Ki, which means universal life energy. So Reiki is all about getting the energy from the universe. And it is based on the premise that all of us can channel that universal energy. But to be a Reiki master, you have to be attuned by another Reiki master. And this is how do you get attuned? They they have you incorporate or uh, be attuned to these symbols that were channeled by a Japanese man named Mikio Asui, who uh, was, he was a shaman. We know this from his headstone, and uh, he was a shaman of the Shin Shingindu family clan. So it's really interesting that um, all of this nowadays people say, but it's Christian, and Asui taught at a, a Christian seminary. You're going to hear that argument a lot. So where did that argument came from? Well, it came from the woman that I just referenced and her name was Takata. And she was a Reiki master under the lineage of one of Isui's students. With Isui's blessings in the 1930s, she brought Reiki to Hawaii where she was from. So she brought it from Japan to the West, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Now, she. this is interesting and this is you can even go on Wikipedia, which is a pretty liberal site, and get the same information I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. Takata, uh, she construed Reiki's history of development in order to make Reiki more appealing to the West. To this end, she made a story up to relate Reiki to Jesus Christ and not with Buddhism. She presented Asui as being a dean of a Christian school, which was not true. Asui obtained the knowledge of Reiki from the Buddhist religious book called Tantra of the Lightning Flash. We know this from Asui's own journals. But Takata claimed that Asui had been inspired by the story of Jesus Christ, who had healed with the touch of his hand using Reiki, and so had come to America to learn Reiki. Um, so she told this to spread Reiki to Christians, believing that Otherwise, people would reject it because, you know, I don't know about you, but I grew up in the 50s and 60s when it was a Christian nation and anything that was not Christian, like I was raised in Christian scientists, we were considered outcasts. I mean, it was anything that was pagan or other religions or new age, it was, uh, you know, stay away. So people in Hawaii, um, even though it's based a lot of it, because I lived there for 11 years before I was saved and moved away from there, a, a lot of you know, Hawaiian practices, you could say are pagan and it's mixed with Christianity there. So at that time in the thirties, though, it would have been more awareness and she could not sell Reiki to the Hawaiians unless she made up this complete fabricated story that Asui was a Christian. And so it's completely fabricated. In 1994, the original manuscript of Asui was found in which he claimed that Reiki had originated from Buddhism and from his visions. And that includes these symbols that we're going to show on the screen right now. And I don't know about you, but symbolism to me is, is pretty creepy topic. And I get really kind of upset when I look at some of these symbols. So when I got attuned to be a Reiki 
you go through level one and then you go through level two and then you have to wait a few months and then you get attuned to being a Reiki master. And each level costs more money. Usually the level one's free to kind of hook you in. And then it's really expensive to become a master. And they attune you. You have to memorize these symbols. You have to know what they mean. Um, I knew one woman who had the tattooed on her wrist so that she said she she could throw them at people with her hand. Um, And so you're attuned to these symbols so that the universal life force energy comes through you and out your hands. And then you can even, you learn how to do it remotely to people. So Reiki has nothing to do with Christianity. And you, and anyone who says that Jesus did Reiki is, is committing blasphemy because Jesus, as we know, is God. We know that he is the second person of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three distinct persons who are three in one, co-equal and co-eternal. And Jesus didn't need to use a symbol to heal anyone because we are his creations. You know, if you really dig into Genesis, you see that Jesus was there in the beginning. Read John's prologue, John 1, in the Gospel of John. You'll see that he was there in the beginning. It says it very clearly by the apostle who Jesus loved and worked and mm-hmm. lived with for three years during his earthly ministry. Mm-hmm. So, why would Jesus need to channel a, a, a symbol from a Japanese man who in the 20s had a clairvoyant vision of using these symbols. That, that makes no sense. So anyone who's saying that is not only being blasphemous, but is being very illogical too. So if you hear these arguments, question them, folks, dig into them, and don't accept them as giving you license to do Reiki. The other caution I want to give folks is I get a lot of letters from people who want to know, is it okay if I go to a chiropractor or a massage therapist as a Christian? And I want to say right off the bat that there can be, and I know personally, some, some uh, the professing, but uh, you know, only God knows their heart, but they're, they're Bible-believing, church-going uh, chiropractors and massage therapists. And so I do believe you can do body work as a Christian and not have it be a pagan practice. I do believe that. But a lot of massage therapists and chiropractors who are not Christians, they do Reiki during the the Mm -hmm. session and they don't ask you or tell you. They just start channeling Reiki into your body and, and it'll feel pleasant and warm and it'll be this vibration and you'll think, oh gosh, this is a talented healer and you know, you'll send all your friends to them, but that's, it's dangerous. The devil likes to, to mix in something sugar-coated, some truth. He mixes it in with lies or we would not follow him. I mean, it goes back to Genesis 3. And Reiki is something that um, seems to be effective. I don't know about you, Jen, but one of the arguments I hear from a lot of New Agers who want to stay on that side of the fence and don't want to heed the call that they're getting from Jesus Mm -hmm. is they say, but New Age feels good and it Mm -hmm. works. And Mm -hmm. so it's, and it becomes an addiction. It also becomes a moneymaker. And so the number one critics that I have, and I don't know about you, are people who make money with new age practices. And that includes Reiki masters who are furious at me for calling it out. And they want to criticize my character, which obviously there's a lot to criticize because I was a big sinner before I was saved and they want to make up stories about me so that people won't listen to me talk about Reiki being an unredeemable practice. It's like in the book of Acts, where Paul was talking about that there's one true God and stay away from these gods and goddesses. And what happened, the silversmiths who were making the statues of the goddesses, their business went down. And so they wanted to kill Paul and they wanted to chase him in the amphitheater. And remember, there was a big ruckus about this because their finances went down. And so folks, if you're thinking about Reiki, Consider the source of anyone who says they're a Christian arguing for Reiki. Please don't listen to anyone who says Jesus did Reiki. Please rebuke them and please repent if you did. The other letter I get very frequently is from people who um, Jesus saved them out of the new age, praise the Lord, and they were like me, a Reiki master. And they want to know, what can I do to get rid of it? It's If you think about it, though, if, if once the Holy Spirit is within us, and we're in the sanctification process. God's in charge of clearing away the old idols from our heart and gave us a new heart and a new life. Right. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so it's not like you have to go through some ritual to get rid of your Reiki master energy or anything. But if you're concerned, 
it would be a really good thing to get on your knees and repent and to pray for God to purify your heart. That's what I've done. And I don't sense any kind of, you know, reverberations from my old Reiki ways. I just want to apologize to anyone who I caused to stumble uh, because I was a Reiki master and I was promoting it at my workshops. Let me ask you a question, Doreen, that I know my audience, um, especially on my TikTok lives, ask me about Reiki and any type of healing work that seems to work. Uh, This sounds very demonic. So when people came to you for these healings, when you were working on them, would you say that it was always a demonic? So, So they're telling you they're healed. They feel better. Is some of it placebo and some of it really working? And how does the devil do that? And why would he want you to be healed? That is such an excellent question. I'm really glad you asked it. And it was a question I had um, because I was raised in Christian science, which is a false gospel religion. And yet every Wednesday night, we would have testimonial meetings when people Mm -hmm. would say they were healed from cancer and broken bones. And my mom used it on my brother and I growing up instead of taking us to doctors. And I saw what seemed to be healings from shamans and and I seemed to have healings from doing Reiki and I did different kinds of energy work. I was doing pranic healing. I was doing polarity therapy with people and things really seemed to work. So I, I asked Justin Peters this question when I interviewed him. If you don't know Justin Peters, check out Justin Peters Ministries. So I was interviewing him because Justin Peters um, has had cerebral palsy his whole life. And he got caught up in the uh, prosperity movement, the the health and wealth, um, you know, word of faith movement. So he used to go to the word of faith uh, kind of healing revivals to try to get healed of cerebral palsy and nothing worked. And he saw behind the scenes that he and other people in wheelchairs were never led up to the stage. It was always people who were kind of shills who were led up to the stage. So he ended up going to um, a seminary in Texas where he got his MDiv, um, Masters of Divinity, which is not an easy thing to get because you have to learn, really get into Hebrew and Greek um, languages. And he did his uh, thesis on word of faith heresy. Okay, so I asked him, just setting him up as the expert that he is. And he said that it's very nuanced how these healings happen in Reiki and shamanism and all these false teachings. He said that demons cause the accident or the illness or the appearance of accident or illness right and then lead people to these false teachers mm-hmm. where they then the demons let go of the oppression and the person seems to be okay but it's demonic oppression being relieved and it's it's only to hook people into false teachers isn't that wow. interesting yeah it is wow that that is um that's not shocking but I, thank you so much for sharing that. It's so interesting. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. And the ultimate deception, really the ultimate deception. And that's who the enemy is, the father of lies, the manipulator, the murderer. So, so Reiki. So then if you're a Reiki master, are you the person we want to see for the healing if we're going for Reiki or, and can you talk a little bit more about remote Reiki? Yeah. And how you think you're able to heal somebody remotely. Yeah. Well, as you know, in the new age, there's a lot of pridefulness. And so you go around like a rooster with your chest sticking out. I'm a Reiki master. <laughs> and and that word master is very egoic, isn't it? It's like, I'm better. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, so it's held out as a marketing scheme to get you to pay more money for the master. Um, and so I know I'm going to get hate mail for this because people who are Reiki masters have one of the way they make their money is by attuning new students. You can only become a Reiki practitioner through a Reiki master. And then there's this whole snobbery about what lineage you are of the symbols and the energy you're passing along. So I was from the Asui lineage, which was the originator. And, and, and there's all these different types of Reiki that have been made up, you know, they're, there's just people make up their own forms of Reiki and they say they're a master of that. And then they, you have to spend money to get that type of Reiki. It's just, it's just silly nonsense this garbage. Is, this is really a spiritual practice. This oh yeah. Why it's completely turning away from Jesus and turning to, and you're, you are going to the spiritual realm, but you're going into the wrong, you're going the wrong direction and you're opening yourself up 
for demonic communication, demonic oppression um, by going down this road. And you're turning away from the one true healer, the great physician, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that, again, is idolatry, is it not? It's it's an, it's idolatry. And at its heart, uh, Reiki is polytheism. It breaks the t- first two commandments that we are still under today. And so we will be judged if we are um, having other gods before our one true God or, or making idols, uh, worshiping idols. And so that's what Reiki does, uh, whether you're sending it or receiving it. We need to repent as those who are believers in Jesus and have nothing to do with the unbelievers. We should not, it's unequally yoked if we have any kind of fellowship with those who are practicing this darkness. And please, even if you're going to get pushback and hate, tell other professing Christians to stay far away from this. Warn them before they go to a chiropractor or to a massage therapist that Reiki could be involved. And what I would do is, you know, if you have your favorite massage therapist is specifically tell them, I don't want Reiki you know, I don't want it or go on Facebook. There's a group there. I think they're still in operation of Christian uh, massage therapists and Christian body workers and find someone from there. If that's something that you're, you know, you're needing for your health or relaxation. What would it look like for somebody to call you up for this remote Reiki healing? Okay. Yeah. What is the belief behind that? Yeah. So remote Reiki is sending energy. It's based on the belief that you don't have to be physically present with someone to heal them. You can talk to them on the phone or through Skype um, or uh, FaceTime, Zoom even, and you can send these symbols, the universal energy uh, to that person remotely, or you can just um, send it to them without even having them know or be physically present. A lot of times when New Agers say, I'm sending love and light, what they really mean is they're sending Reiki energy. And as someone who has been involved with Christian prayers now for the five years that I've been saved, um, the the mixture of having Reiki in there, I think is um, causes static. I really do. So I, I don't think we want to have just anybody and everybody praying for a situation. I think that you want to ask for Christian prayers only, biblically based Christian prayers. And then people will say, yeah, but Jesus, you know, he had, he ate with tax collectors and prostitutes and sinners. Yeah, he did to confront them, to convict them of their sin, not because he was agreeing with them or saying, hey, I love you unconditionally. You can do whatever you want. You be you. Jesus did not say you be you. He right. constantly said, repent for the kingdom of, of heaven is, is on hand, is near. So, we can't just make it up as we go along, which is what I was doing in the new age. I was trying to blend Christianity, my my own special version of Christianity mm-hmm. with just whatever I wanted. I was so curious all the time, Jen. I was researching healings and 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 studying world religions. And I would have argued that, you know, Christianity is organized religion and people don't like organized religion because there's hypocrites and the um, and, and there's priests who abuse children. I would have argued that, you know, reject normal Christianity and come to this open-minded Christianity where we love Jesus as a spirit guide. A lot of people have told me that they've met Jesus in a Reiki session. Wow. And of course, it's not Jesus. It's a demon pretending to be Jesus. And how do we know this? Because the pretend Jesus tells you, you can do whatever you want where the real Jesus says in John 14, if you love me, obey my commandments. And what are Jesus commandments? You can find them in Exodus. It is the 10 commandments or Google 10 commandments. They're right there. It's easy to know. God wrote those commandments on our heart. That's why people in remote villages who've never read the Bible, never heard of Jesus, they still know that it's wrong to kill or still, we all know that it's wrong to steal. Sure. Right. uh, Laws are written on our heart. Amen. One more question, Doreen, for you. What if a Christian comes up to us and says, well, what about in the Bible when they're talking about laying hands on yeah. somebody and yeah. healing that way? I know you touched a little bit on the on Justin Peters and what he went through, but I've heard, but what about us laying hands on one another? Isn't that like Reiki? Well, we are counseled to have the elders lay hand and use uh, oil. Yeah, if someone needs to be healed, that's in the epistles. But um, what we're not counseled to do 
is to use idolatrous symbols and to channel the universal life force, which again would be an idol, would be worship in the creation instead of the creator. We're commanded not to do that again and again. So laying hands is biblical, but it's been twisted to justify this new age practice that was that had a source through someone who was a shaman and who had these visions of these symbols. That's not biblical. There's no way to redeem that. Right. And plus it could cause someone to stumble. I mean, if we want to argue that Paul said that the meat that was prayed over in the pagan temples, mm -hmm. that Christians could eat that meat. It, he also said in that same passage that we should not eat that meat in front of a, a new believer if it's going to cause that new believer to stumble. And if a Christian is involved with Reiki, it could cause someone to be confused. It could cause a new believer to fall into the pit of darkness by getting involved with Reiki. It could cause someone who's being called by Jesus to be confused that they could mix Reiki with Christianity. So it, even if you say argue this is part of Christian liberty, you have to acknowledge that this could cause someone to stumble. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I just want to close, and we've said this before, but not on this video, that, mm -hmm. that the Bible says people can be redeemed, but not pagan practices. And so if you think of a Ouija board, which is you know a way to divine so-called spirits, but most people know that only demons would come through a Ouija board. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't matter how many Bible verses you put on that Ouija board. It still wouldn't be a Christian Ouija board. And it's the same with any pagan practice, including Reiki. No matter how, what your intentions are, you know, you're going to say, God knows my heart. Yeah, God does. That's, you should be afraid that God knows your heart. The Bible says we'll be judged for all the secrets in our heart. Yeah. So you, no matter how many Bible verses you say over Reiki or you're playing Christian hymns while doing Reiki, it's, it's unredeemable and no Christian should have anything to do with it. There's ways to heal that are biblical. There's ways to heal that don't involve attuning with the symbols and channeling universal energies. And it's all coming down to God's will. God will heal according to his will. He still heals miraculously today. We know that for a fact, but it's according to his will. And we know from second Corinthians that sometimes God allows people to not be healed, to draw us closer to him. Paul had a thorn in his side that couldn't be healed. We don't know what it was exactly. Could have been a demon, could have been some illness or injury. He knew that it was God's will. And we have to have that grace. The truth has to be out there. And I'm, I'm so glad that the Lord saved us both and has sent us out. He saves us. He sends you out. That's what he does. That's right. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you. I really appreciate it.